Mr. Chair, we're live now. Okay, we can get started. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19 committee public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelist when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be en enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadlines. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we're meeting on is traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 is amended. This meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and can create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the Committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your, include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and in the event of appeal, the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the Committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the Committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed in the agenda. I'm starting off this afternoon with item 18. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with a presentation if desired, where the committee does not require a presentation. Applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions of each speaker after if they finish their, um, their presentations and uh, then after uh, take the um, matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee, and the clock is on the screen and will show the uh, time, and when you're approaching five minutes, we'll ask you to wrap up. When addressing the committee, please start off by clearly stating your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and makes their presentation to the committee. Uh, please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to make to the proposal made at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those, in the, those who are entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentations. And will finish the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues and answer those questions that have been raised by the speakers. That will then mark the end of the discussion and the application 
is then taken into committee for a decision. Uh, do any of the panel or staff members uh, have any declarations of interest to declare with respect to the matters before us on this afternoon's agenda? Okay, none to declare. And uh, deferrals, we'll deal with the deferrals. We have a deferral memo uh, from planning staff that typically uh, lists uh, the reason for the deferral and deferral requests being made in advance. In this case, we have items 21 A, B, and C and 22 A, B, and C, um, 10 and 12 Cavell. And well, let's do them separately, even though they're the same agent. So the first one we'll call is 21 uh, A, B, and C, 10 Cavell and 12 Cavell. Uh, David Igleman is the agent. This is. Um... Good afternoon, sir, chair uh, and committee members. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I am uh, requesting a deferral um, for uh, uh, a few reasons. Uh, the first one being that um, ECS has not provided comments on this on these applications yet. Um, so we don't have the benefit of having uh, comments from them. And uh, we are also, <laughs> excuse me, corresponding with um, transportation and planning staff regarding the application and are uh, making revisions to satisfy some uh, concerns they have raised. Okay, so it's a double, uh, two reasons for the referral. Um, I don't believe, oh yes, we, do we have anyone else? Well, I know well, all we have is you, uh, so we don't have to weigh in with anyone. So committee members, any questions for Mr. Eagleman or someone ready to weigh in with, uh, this was obviously an application to sever the lot into two undersized lots, uh, et cetera. So uh, next application is his also. So um, can I have a motion to uh, defer uh, this application, please? Unless someone has some questions. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll defer, uh, uh, make a motion to defer this application to enable uh, more time for engineering and construction services to report on it and to enable the applicant to uh, continue discussions with the community planning department. Okay, thank you. Motion. And I can't see everyone's hands. I see Mishy McClowski's though. Okay, seconded. Uh, all in favor? And I take it it's unanimous, even though I can't see Stan. Okay. Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chair and um, Committee. Thank you. Don't go away, Mr. Eagleman, because you're the next application item number 22. Uh, it's an application to present to sever and uh, the two sub uh, undersized residential lots and create and uh, develop as a pair of new semi detached dwellings applications A, B, and C. And again, the reason as I've noted here is item reason number four on the planning memo. And then I see a request from you as well that there are misvariances and um, the planning and ECS requested to hold until the revisions are provided. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we are deferring this because uh, essentially we made revisions to the plans and we obtained a new zoning notice in time uh, prior to the hearing. However, uh, the new notice identified a, a variance that was not picked up in earlier um, iterations of the plans and earlier zoning notices. So as a result, the public notice does not reflect all of the variances that we require. And uh, as such, we will be, uh, we, I am requesting that this application be deferred. Okay. For Mr. Eagleman, or can someone uh, weigh in with a motion of deferral? And I can't see. Uh, Taylor? All I see. Now I just see Stan. Mr. Taylor, uh, it says you're speaking. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll move deferral to uh, enable the applicant to correctly state the required variances. Okay. 
Second there for that. I'll second that, Stan. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, the matter I assume is unanimous. Uh, the matter is deferred. Thank you, Mr. Engelman. We'll see you again. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. And although it's not on the planning list, I understand uh, just before the meeting that uh, item number 24, A, B, and C, 734, Rural York Road, uh, which is against consent to sever into two undersized residential lots, as well as the road uh, dedication and to uh, redevelop beach, uh, that that is also going to be uh, deferred. I believe uh, I have Evangelista is the uh, the applicant again. In this case, uh, there are ten variances on each of the uh, the new detached dwellings with detached garages seeking to be built. Urban forestry is against uh, seven thirty six next door, as well as there's a petition with forty five signatures. So, and as well. So I understand this matter is going to be deferred, Mrs. Evangelista. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members. Uh, yes, 734, we are asking for a deferral today. We do, uh, the owner, in light of um, the opposition, I know he has spoken to some neighbours, but in light of the opposition and the councillor's letter, we do want to revisit, um, you know, what the owner would like to do on this property. Okay. And have an opportunity to speak to the neighbours and the counselor. Okay, very good. So members, any questions for Ms. Evangelista or can I have a motion to defer for that purpose? We have people here present, if we can just sort of touch base with Right, right, sorry. We have some other people on the line, my, my apologies. Um, yes, we have the neighbors. We have several neighbors from one and nine Darlington Drive and from 736 Rural York right next door. Um, let's hear from them first. It's Dominic Mistrullo or Natalia Canal. Uh, hello, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, I'm wondering if the uh, motion to have this deferred uh, would mean that. Could you just um, your name and address for the record, please? Of course, this is Dominic Mistrullo uh, from 736 Royal York Road. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm just one. Thank you. I'm just wondering if uh, if it's um, uh, worth the, the time of the committee for me to go through my details if we are going to be deferred, especially in yeah. light of... We just want uh, to know if you're changes. in favor of a deferral. Yeah, we, when we do Sorry? a deferral, hear from you on the marriage, you'll have your time and maybe the application uh, will oh, be changed. Oh, I understand. Okay, thank so, you. So uh, when the matter is being deferred, we, uh, we don't hear from the merits just to hear... Your position on, on a deferral, I assume you wouldn't be opposed, and hopefully the there'll be some consultation, and hopefully the application will improve uh, from yes, your perspective. We, thank you. That's that, that's what I thought. And yes, we are not opposed to the deferral, especially if it's uh, open to some more um, communication. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, next person on the line is uh, Ori Arisha. Nachowski at 9 Darlington. Yes, hello. My name is Arisha Nachowski. I do live at 9 Darlington Drive. Um, I find it perplexing that they actually are asking for a deferral because uh, this is an application that went in in 2020 and had lots and lots of time to be speaking with local residences, which um, the owner never did. He never did. And uh, only now, um, since uh, you know, there's so so much opposition to this, uh, they've requested it. I mean, the city planning staff has also supported the residents. The uh, councillor, Mayor Grimes, has supported um, our opposition. So it, it just perplexes me uh, why his reasons for deferral. Okay, well, you heard them, so. Uh... Hopefully they'll come back with an improved uh, application uh, as far as your neighbors are concerned. Okay, hopefully. Okay, so stay tuned. You will be re-notified. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess the last person on the line is number one, Darlington, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Newell. Hello. Hello. 
Hello, Chair. Hello. And members, it's uh, Edward Newell, and I live at One Darlington Drive. So um, I'm was, uh, totally against the uh, variances, um, and I have been consulting with uh, several neighbors who were not notified about the changes that were happening. So I'm I'm okay with the deferral, but I agree with uh, Arisha that uh, the, um, the the owner 734 had plenty of time to uh, submit changes and discuss with uh, uh, with um, uh, people in the in the neighborhood and and also our our counselor. Right. It's I guess it's at their peril until they speak and get yeah. something a consensus and get an approval. We're not building anything, so. Uh, you will be re-notified, and again, if there's certain neighbors that are outside the uh, vicinity of uh, circulation of uh, written notice, uh, you can certainly draw their attention to it at that time as well. So you will be re-notified at the appropriate time when they bring this back. Thank you very much. Okay, have a wonderful day. You too. Okay, so members, uh, motion to defer this matter. We, okay, Mr. Kamara. Yeah, I'll, I'll move to defer so to, okay. to, to allow the applicant more time to process with neighbors and planning. Okay, seconder. Mr. Okay, we'll see you, uh, Mrs. Evangelist, I think later this afternoon on another matter. Okay, so that deals with the deferral. So we can go back to the top uh, of the afternoon agenda to item number 18, which is 114 Falk Avenue. And this is an application to construct a new rear yard deck. Uh, there are three variances and actually nothing on this application. Speaker is um, Turanpreet Carr. Turanpreet? Hello, hi. Hi, Mr. Chair. Hello. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is my name is Tarun Preet Kaur, and I'm here for 114 Fork Avenue. And the proposal is to build a patio cover attached to the existing dwelling in the rear yard of the house. So the requested variants are three, and the variants are pretty much straightforward. The first one is maximum uh, permitted coverage is allowable as 33%, and we are proposing 34%. And the second one is maximum permitted floor space index is 0 0.40 times the lot area. And we are going 0.47 times the lot area. And the third one is permitted dwelling length is maximum 17 meters. And we are going with attached with the patio cover. It is 18.20 meters. That's all. Yes. Yeah, so and that includes the cover, the patio cover. So, uh, like, yeah, very simple. Uh, let's we have no communication from neighbors or from city departments. So let's just see if the members have any questions for you or if someone's ready for a motion. Members. Uh, if there's no Mr. questions. I'm ready for a recommendation. Um, I'm going to move for approval. The requested uh, minor variances meet the four tests in the Planning Act. So I'll move for approval, no conditions. Thank you. Seconded for that motion. Ms. McCluskey, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Carr. You have your approval. Ms. Thank Carr. you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. thank you. Okay, have a wonderful afternoon. You too. You as well. Bye-bye. Okay, next application is item number 19, 135 Milton Street. It's for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage with three variances. Um, we have a previous decision from 2019 uh, when uh, there was an application for, to consent to sever the property, which we refused. We're now coming back to build one new house. And we have nothing on file other than the additional materials. We have now letters of support from 137 next door and 134 across the street. And the speaker is Khalid Ibrahim, the agent for the applicant. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, Very um, straightforward. Uh, you're looking to build yes. a new dwelling with only uh, three variances. Right. Uh, 
I take it the floor space index is is acceptable in the area. It's uh, similar to 5.59. Yeah. The other two are very minor. Is there anything you'd like to advise the committee? I don't think we need a full presentation. No, yeah, I think it's straightforward application, yeah. Okay, so let's see if anyone has any questions for you or if they're ready for a motion. Members? Any questions or uh, or a motion? And uh, there are no conditions that I can see. Forestry. Okay, I didn't see that. Thank you. Um, ready to with a motion, sir? Uh, I could do that, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe the application uh, meets the four tests and is minor. Uh, I would therefore like to move approval subject to forestry condition number one. Okay, thank you. Second for that motion. And again, I don't have a visual, so please by voice. John Taylor. Thank you. I'm all in favor. Okay, I think yeah. it's unanimous. Okay. Can we stop sharing? I just don't know if Mishi voted in favor. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next application is uh, is a, a severance that I guess we can proceed with. It's uh, application number 20 A, B, and C. It's uh, an application to sever the lot into two residential lots. Uh, the retained lot, the existing park building will be maintained and requires variances as set out in the application B. And in the park, uh, the existing dwelling will also be maintained and requires variances to the zoning, uh, to the zoning bylaws set out in, in application C. So we have um, planning is looking for a refusal of variance three on part two, the proposed east side setback of the exterior stairs and recommend that the entrances to the dwelling unit be internalized to give the appearance of a detached house and we have five letters of support so that looks like all we have here uh, i guess soon we don't have any ecs because there's no construction going on um and the speaker is tyler peck uh, agent for the applicant and then we have the neighbor 78 rosemont on the line as well Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. It's Good afternoon. Tyler Peck. I, apparently, you're joining us on video. So I can do that. that. Yep, that is. Yeah, you're on a loop. Saying that you will do so, so we can pause while staff makes the arrangements. I think the arrangements have been made. Okay, but I don't see you. <laughs> That's okay, Mr. There Chair. He's on the screen. Okay. That's good. Okay. Should, um, g given that there's a speaker on the item, I presume that the committee would like a presentation from me. Uh, sure, yes. To see, we don't know what the concerns are, and I guess just uh, touched on the issue about um, also the planning staff condition. Of course. So, um, thank you to. Sorry Dan to interrupt, Mr. Chair. We were unable to reach the neighbor at 78 Rosemount. Okay. So, they're not on the line. Uh, okay, but still, I guess we should still get the presentation in any event, just touching on whether you're okay with this uh, refusal of variance three on the east side setback. Uh, and uh, just in general, uh, what's the use where there's no construction here, correct? That's well, there are interior alterations that are proposed to both buildings with minor exterior alterations, and those include the stair access on the um, lot at 87, as well as a revised um, access to the proposed basement units at 89. The uh, proposal is obviously the three applications before you to be considered jointly. The severance application, um, the details of that are, are largely technical in nature. It's to locate the two existing building on separate lots. They've been reviewed by city staff and meet the requirements of the planning act and the official plan. Happy to run through details of that. Should the committee have questions? Yeah, the, we have your I, cover letter up on the board. So, you know, we have your two cover letters that, uh, in our materials. That's right. So we provided a detailed planning rationale in the original cover letter, and we've replied to comments that we had received from both transportation services regarding parking and from uh, city planning staff regarding the stairwell in an addendum letter that was filed. I'll run through um, those those uh, details. We certainly think that the 
we've done an additional parking analysis to support the application. That's a, that's outlined in the addendum letter. It shows that improvements to the rapid transit service at Weston Station since 2013 have been accompanied by ridership growth. There's a cycling network um, improvements that are proposed between 2022 and 2024, which will encourage cycling, robust uh, sidewalk network, and the recent introduction of the John Street pedestrian bridge, which uh, provides further connection to the site to existing higher order transit at Weston Station. The proposed parking supply is also uh, consistent, fully consistent with the recently adopted amendments to the bylaw by City Council for reducing residential parking requirements. This council direction was supported by transportation services as, and is appropriate for these rental buildings um, in close proximity to that existing and expanded higher order transit. It's also directly in line with both OP policy for the use, the supporting the use of alternative modes of transportation as well as the increase in rental housing supply in a manner that's sensitive to the existing and planned context of neighborhoods. The committee also further um, had previously reduced, uh, approved a reduction in the parking supply in an application on the site in 2018 uh, that permitted the, the currently existing uh, apartment building at 89 Rosemount. Uh, we were, we've confirmed with city planning staff that uh, they generally don't object to the applications, save for the comments that they made on the variance associated with the introduction of the very small set of stairs, um, exterior stairs along the side of the existing building at 87 Rosemount. In our addendum letter, we've outlined that the proposed staircase would only occupy a very small portion of the total uh, lot depth. The, it does not alter the house form appearance of the existing building when viewed from the street. And actually, in our opinion, it helps to maintain the existing look of the front facade of the building. As an example, this is in line with zoning regulations for secondary suites, which uh, do not permit alterations to the front main wall. The proposed side stairs are in a, an area that's currently covered by hardscape. It's abutting a driveway in the adjacent lot, and that adjacent lot itself is occupied by a multi-unit residential building. It contains exterior staircases um, providing, I'm not sure if it's primary or emergency access uh, to that building. And that's shown in photos that we provided in the in cover letter two as well, that's directly adjacent to the site. And the exterior staircases on this side main wall provide more than adequate distance given the existence of the driveway um, in that location on the adjacent site, adequate separation distance between the existing buildings. The neighbors have uh, filed five letters of support. That includes um, the sites directly across the street on Rosemount, as well as the site adjacent on, on Rosemount uh, to which this staircase will abut. So we submit that um, the committee, um, will certainly recommend that the committee approve all of the variances for 87 Rosemount as they're set out. I can do a quick run through of the, the four tests generally, but um, as per the Covering materials, the, the densities are in line with uh, existing approvals and certainly existing multi unit buildings within this immediate neighborhood. Um, they are utilizing and taking advantage of the ex existing built form with very minimal um, interventions and alterations to the exterior of the building. And this will provide much needed rental housing in the area, again, in very close proximity to a higher order public transit and certainly recent investments in that. They don't um, result in changes to the built form, um, with the exception of the staircases, um, and uh, we submit that are in, in line, in conform with the OP, are meet the general intent and purpose of the bylaw, are certainly desirable for uh, the development of this of the lands in this location, uh, and are minor in nature. And with that, I think I'm just on time and happy to answer the committee's questions. Unfortunately, I can't hear the chair. Sorry, I turned off my uh, background noise. I forgot. Members for Mr. Peck. Just with regards to the stair, um, to the immediately to the east of that site, is that not a, a you say that's an apartment building? It's not a single family dwelling? It's a house form building that has been, um, that is currently converted, to, from, multiple, converted to multiple uh, dwelling units. That's and correct. Do, does it have fire escapes? It does on the rear portion of the site, and that's we've outlined that in photographs that we provided with our addendum letter okay, as well. Thanks. And I would actually note um, some, it, along those lines that there is a similar exterior staircase on the existing building at 89 Rosemount to provide um, so that I realize, the yeah. access as well. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any more questions? 
Barry Palmer, just uh, the stairs, it's not possible to internalize yes, and, and provide that function for those units. It's certainly not the most efficient way to utilize the, the building and to maximize the, the rental housing space to internalize entrances. It also provides for um, a, a very clear separate entrance to the building and is, is not, given the limited impact of the stairs, is not the preferred design option for this site in order to um, provide access to those three units on the site. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any further questions or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Kamark? Uh, yeah, I, I find the application to, um, to, to be uh, support, I, I want to support the application for the rental housing that's certainly needed in the city. And I believe it's desirable from that perspective. I believe the um, variances being sought are minor, and uh, I would like to uh, move approval um, as requested. Okay, with no, thank uh, you. no conditions. No conditions. Okay, seconded for Mr. We do have Moore. standard consent conditions. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Just not the engineering construction ones because there is no. I assume this is being done for estate purposes or. We just haven't received comments from them. Okay. But it's still subject to the standard, you know, one year and all of all of those conditions. Yeah, the time limits and all of that stuff, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so moved a seconder for that. Mr. Palmer, thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Peck. Application has been approved. Okay, so I guess our next step is item 155 Aldercrest Road. It's an application again for consent to sever the property into two undersized lots uh, on each side uh, proposed to be redeveloped as the site of a new detached dwelling requiring in each case, uh, I believe 12, 12 variances to the zoning bylaw. Um, and planning is recommending refusals. I think they believe that semis would be more in keeping here. Urban forestry is looking to, uh, for a denial. And we have, it was frozen here. Anyway, we have, uh, that's, what we have on this. That's all we have. I don't look like we have any, anything from neighbors. And, uh, the speaker is, uh, Ida Evangelista. And good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Ida Evangelista on behalf of the owners for 155 Aldercrest. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> the application that you have in front of you, um, we did uh, have conversation with planning. Uh, as you see from their staff report, um, they um, are in support of the severance. Um, what they don't support is that we are um, asking for two single family dwellings. They believe that the prevailing pattern of the neighborhood are semi-detached. However, if we look on this block, we have five semi-detached homes and we have 11 single family dwellings along with four triplexes and um, three story townhouses, which, which are just literally right across the street at the corner of uh, Horner and Aldercrest. Uh, one of the comments that planning did make was they wanted us to remove the length variance of 17.6 meters, which we did. It's unfortunate that um, by when we spoke to planning and we did try to submit for a revised review, uh, zoning is backlogged. So we weren't able to get an actual um, revised zoning review from them. However, I did indicate that I would remove uh, variances seven and nine uh, relating to the length and the deck on both homes. So I would just like to go on record that we are removing variances seven and nine, uh, seven okay. being the length and nine being the variance for the deck. So that being said, and in the report, he does state that um, the severed lots would result in lot frontages in areas that are typically larger than previous severances in the, I, in the I area. I saw that. I, saw that. I was going to exactly. So, 
What does right. that mean? So, so, <laughs> so our, what we're proposing, our, our, our uh, consent application, our lots are bigger than what has, you know, been um, approved previously. And if you re refer to my submission, on page four, you'll see 167 A and B, 206 and 208 Alder Crest. So you'll see that, and, and of applications that have uh, been um, in front of the committee uh, prior, they are consent applications for two single family dwellings. And, you know, that's clear on my photos, uh, be it on the block and around the corner. Um, you know, moving forward, it's more over um, single family dwellings. I would also like to add that um, I did speak to uh, neighbors directly behind when I visited the site, spoke to the neighbors, uh, Rita and uh, Tony, and they were in support. They were actually quite happy that we are doing two separate homes. Uh, actually, Tina, Rita, and Tony. Um, so, what we're proposing exists. The prevailing character in this neighborhood are um, single family uh, dwellings. The variances that we are proposing um, is consistent with the neighborhood. And uh, I'm open to any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. I was gonna make the same comment that I read that where it said that they acknowledge that the severed lots would result in lot frontages in areas that are typically larger than the proposed severance. And then it goes mm -hmm. on to say that the prevailing built form on lots with similar frontages are uh, semi-detached, uh, would be more in keeping. You're pointing out there are others. I guess what it comes down to, and we see this often at committee, my question is the difference between what, what are you proposing as the uh, internal uh, sentence lot but if you were to get the two singles what is the uh is there enough room what's the distance between the two the two houses one 1.2 meters so that's sufficient 1.2 meters yeah. and that's sufficient that's sufficient for light safety maintenance uh and air okay. um, I, I i i do on a lot of this size having two single family dwellings with the separation between the two, I believe that allows more for light. And actually that was uh, one of the comments that the neighbors did make. It's like, oh, we're not gonna have this, you know, one big massive, um, you know, box next to us because it, right next door we have, we have a triplex, right? So, and that was, you know, one of their concerns. And um, Mr. Chair, can I just add one more comment um, for forestry? Yep. Forestry, the forestry report, they are stating that we will be removing a tree. However, we have been very careful in citing the two homes and the two <clears throat> and the two driveways around the tree. And any any work for the driveway um, around the outer perimeter of the canopy of the tree and the root system. Um, will be done either hand dig or air spade. So that tree is an integral part. They want to keep the tree. So we are not harming the tree. Okay, just going back to my question about what community planning said that this is lot, this, these proposed lots are larger and frontage and, and area. You're at 7.62 and 306.55. So but what is it? What is that? How much smaller? They didn't get in much smaller. The typical lot is. Is it seven point four two, uh, seven point two? I, I don't know. They do it, point it out very, that I'm seven point. I'm seven point six two. So it varies. Apparently, it varies from approximately uh, seven point four to seven point five five. So okay. that's a that's you know some of the lots in the area. That's what they are typically. Some are even okay, six point okay, so, eight. Uh, thank you. So anyway, let's see if anyone else has any questions uh, for you. I have a question, Mr. Chair, uh, regarding Mr. Evangelista. Your FSI proposed is 0.73. How does that compare to uh, how typical houses in that neighborhood? Um, for new two-story homes in the neighborhood, 
No, uh, for, prevailing, not enough from you, just prevailing. There, it is very consistent with uh, new homes in the neighborhood. Um, there are homes that um, are up to an FSI of 0.85. How is that in relation to the average homes? Uh, this is, it is very characteristic. Uh, there are, there's an eclectic mix in this um, an area okay. through you, Mr. Chair. So this is, you know, uh, when we say prevailing, like we have triplexes, bungalows, um, duplexes, three stories. So this is very characteristic what we're seeing happening and transpiring in this neighborhood. This is actually quite point, modest. Sorry, you were at point, okay, you were at point seven one. I thought I heard point seven three. Seven three. Seven three, I thought I see point seven one. No? For, for FSI? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, my mistake. Sorry. Okay, any other questions uh, or someone ready for a motion? Point seven three. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chair, firstly, with respect to the consent, uh, I believe uh, it's been demonstrated that the proposed lot sizes are compatible with the immediate vicinity in terms of frontage and area. So I move approval of the consent subject to the standard conditions of consent. And uh, I find the variances to be uh, in keeping with the forecast and the planning act. And I move approval of the two variance applications uh, deleting variances seven and nine as requested by uh, Ms. Evangelista. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that motion of approval for the variances would be conditional on urban forestry condition number one. Okay, thank you. Second for Mr. Taylor's motion. Mr. Palmer, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mrs. Evangelista. And um, okay, we can move on to the next application. Uh, the next application is actually the rest of the afternoon. We have items that were previously deferred. So this matter is deferred from April 22 hearing, uh, 21 Waltham Drive, Waltham, Waltham Drive. It's to Story south side edition, a one story front edition to include an attached garage. And there are three variances. We have a material from the previous hearing and uh, supplementary materials. We have a, like a presentation. Planning is asking for a condition of approval to be constructed as those building length and the uh, exterior main wall height. And ravines and natural feature protection have no conditions. Urban forestry looking for condition number two. And the speaker on this application, um, my computer closed. Perhaps you can tell me, staff, who the speaker is. It's Lisa Christie, the applicant. Okay. Only the one speaker? Yes. yes. Just okay. the applicant. Yep. Okay. Welcome. Well, I have Lisa good afternoon. Christie. Lisa Christie. Hello. Yeah, Lisa Christie. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Lisa Christie from WE Outred and Associates. Um, our mailing address is 2140 Winston Park Drive, Suite 28 in Oakville, L6H5V5. Okay, perhaps we can put your uh, presentation materials on the screen. Sure. And if you want to run through and just indicate if yeah, you're. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Go ahead. So, Mr. Chair and committee members, uh, my name is Lisa Christie, and I represent the owners of 21 Waltham Drive in Etobicoke. Um, as you mentioned in the introduction, the proposal is for a two-story side and one-story front addition. And basically, what the owners are proposing to do is to um, remove a carport on the side of the house, on the south side of the property, and instead put that the parking garage area in the front of the house um, where they currently just have a parking pad and they park on the on the front of the of the property. Um, next slide, please. 
To facilitate this, uh, this renovation, three variances are required. Um, the first is the front yard setback, which is reduced to allow for that new garage at the front, which will really just replace a parking pad. The second is for a building length, which is uh, longer than permitted in the bylaw, partially as a result of the new garage and partially also the way the zoning bylaw, um, the way the measurement is done in the bylaw and the staff report explains clearly why that is. I can get into that in details if you're interested. Um, and then the third is the height of the exterior main wall at the front and the rear are higher than permitted because of the unique design of the house, which draws on the current sloped roof design of the dwelling. Um, next slide, please. So as you can see, the current home is a uh, very unique style typical of the 50s, which is when this neighborhood was developed. Um, carport, not a garage, um, and sloped roofs. It's a, it's, you can almost consider it a heritage dwelling, but in any case, it's a very interesting design. And you can see in the photo on the right-hand side, how the, the one car is parked at the front. If we could go to the next slide. You'll see that the architect has mirrored the design, the sloped roofs and tried to maintain the, the spirit of the 1950s style dwelling while adding on a second story addition where the carport is on what would be the left side of the photo and replacing the parking pad at the front with a garage. Next slide. As you can see, um, the next few slides actually show a number of different uh, two-story redevelopments on Waltham Drive right in the immediate neighborhood, 5, 7, 6, 10, number 25 Waltham, um, and number 41 and 43 Harlow Crescent, which are just around the corner. They're at the end of Waltham. If you turn left, that's right there. So there's lots of um, infill. Uh, we feel that ours is particularly unique and it's a great design, fits well into the neighborhood. Um, next slides. Um, so again, as you discussed in the uh, in the introduction, um, the proposed addition is to remove an outdated and non-functional carport, replace the carport with a two-story addition to give the family more living space, replace the front yard parking area with a new garage. Um, the north portion of the dwelling will almost remain as it is. Um, because the garage is side-loaded, um, not facing the street, the impact of its appearance is reduced by not having large front garage doors facing right onto the road, but in fact, you, your eye will be drawn past the garage and to the design of the house. And as I mentioned earlier, the new design is complementary to the existing 1950s home on the property, and the architect was very sensitive to uh, to trying to maintain the characteristics of that dwelling. Okay, thank you. Uh, particularly, particularly nice uh, design and uh, not having the side loaded garage so it doesn't face the street. I guess assume you can still swing your car in and use that garage. <laughs> or, Absolutely. Uh, Somebody's yeah. done those measurements. <laughs> okay. Because it's so much nicer than uh, the alternative and sort of mirrors what, what's been there that that never had been a garage door at the front. So very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the variances, nothing that uh, and you were You're okay with the planning uh, condition from community planning? Tying it to the plans? Yeah, yes, we are. Okay. Okay, let's see if members have any questions for you, if someone's ready for a motion. Mr. Taylor? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm satisfied that the uh, variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act. I'm quite impressed at the, uh, the design of this house, keeping the, the kind of 50s flavor uh, while still modernizing it. Um, so I move approval subject to urban forestry condition two and the planning department conditions. Condition. Thank you. Seconded for that, Mr. Kunorik. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Lisa Christie, for a very good presentation and for very nice design. Thank you. Okay, our next application is item number twenty six fourteen Fabian Place. A whole bunch of things to construct a two story rear side.
Sorry to interrupt. Are you able to hear us here? Mr. Chair, we seem to lo have lost uh, voice connection with you at, on your end. Can one of the other members uh, quick do a voice check for us? Any member, really? Just unmute yourself and say hello. Hi, Barbara, are you able to hear us now? Yes, I can, and I can see the clock, but it, the, mem the members decided to take a break. Okay, thank you.
Okay, we have the room, the room back. And uh, we have, I guess, quorum. So we just introduced uh, item 2614 Fabian, planning, recommending refusal, seven variances, cover letter, supporting material, and the material from the previous hearing. Okay, uh, is staff back? Yeah, we're here. Okay. So we have uh, Eddie Perez, I guess, is uh, we're just about to hear from Eddie Perez. And, and we have the two neighbors on the line as well. Hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman and committee members. Uh, my name is Eddie Perez. I'm here on behalf of the owners. Uh, yeah, Eddie, you want to try to speak up a little bit? Yeah, I'm here on behalf of uh, the yeah. owners. Uh, uh, we're Thank proposing, you. like you mentioned, uh, the additions to the rear, the side, front porch. Uh, the variances were reduced. Uh, we originally had a, a wider house. We had a uh, side yard was uh, was five feet. We now uh, changed it to six with 1.83. So because the neighbor uh, impact it was a less of an impact on him. And uh, we had spoken to the neighbor next door. He had a letter of objection originally, but now he's in support. After we made the changes, he only asked for uh, frosted glass at the back uh, rear addition. As you can see on the site plan, the rear addition is just uh, approximately a meter and, and a little bit over what the existing uh, footprint of the that portion is at the back. And uh, the impact on him will be less because we were allowed uh, 1.5 meter there and we actually increased it by another foot there. We also reduced the house by two feet in length. So we do comply on the second floor. We don't comply in the length on the first floor. We're at 18.25, only in that one story uh, addition at the back where the sunroom is. And uh, we're over slightly there. And then we also, we took out the office that was on the second floor is now open to below. And uh, we also reduced the house, the width. So they made it smaller there. We were originally were at 0.66 times the area of the lot. We're now at 0.63, so we we reduced that. The original length was 18.86. It's now 18.25. So we've been making changes for the impact to be less on the neighbors. I've also attached some pictures of houses that have been approved with the same similar lots as ours, with the same coverage and and such. There isn't too much development in the area because uh, I guess people haven't started in that area building new homes and uh, renovating their homes. It's mostly older homes there. So there's not a lot of examples, but these three examples, uh, the, the coverage is similar to ours. The lots are similar to ours. And we are, I feel that the impact on the neighbors now is very minimal and the neighbor to the number 12, which is named Peter Javikis, He's, he's on board with us now after the changes that we made. We've been trying to go back and forth with uh, planning and uh, trying to get them on board, but they f feel that there's not too many uh, development in the area, but that's gonna be coming in the future. As you know, uh, things are getting developed all over and this is gonna be an area that's probably gonna go forward, moving forward as well. So that's what I have to say now and I'll hear from the neighbors and see what they have okay. to say. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Any questions for Mr. Perez at this point? No, I, I have a few, if I may. Um, Mr. Perez, your original application did not have a lot, lot coverage uh, variance. Now you do. Was that an oversight or was that a change? No, that was an oversight. That was one of the reasons why we also deferred it because we, we realized that the zoning examiner hadn't uh, put in the lot coverage. Then we, we uh, we went back to him and he okay. realized he missed it. Thank you. No, no, that's fine. I just wanted to clarify that. And then secondly, I just wanted to know um, the, the, the date of the drawings um, that has all of the revisions, uh, are, are they dated March the 30th or June the 29th? No, these ones that the revisions were April 1st. You, you, you've, but you've made revisions since April 1st, have you not? Uh, you you have drawings dated um, March thirtieth. No, the the latest ones that we did was a, a we had made all the changes. Uh, 
Sorry, oh, April. Okay, sorry, April. So what is the date? April? First, yeah. April 1st. Okay, you have sorry. them date stamped as June 29th. Yeah, they were stamped later, but uh, the changes were made in that when we... Okay, okay so wait. if we're to refer to them, uh, Barb, what date do we refer to them as? Uh, well, on our title block, we have... by Committee of Adjustment on June 29th. June 20. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they're the same drawings there. Okay. Right. And yet, questions for Mr. Perez, we'll hear from the neighbors. You're okay? Sorry, yes, I I, 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 I muted myself uh, while I said thank you. So, okay. Sorry. okay, the next meeting is Edith uh, Winfield, 25 uh, Drury Lane. Uh, thank you for hearing me. I feel that this is not an appropriate sort of thing for our neighborhood. This has, uh, this will loom over the neighbors and they, they become a part of your life, whether you want them to be or not. And I don't see why when this is pre presumably a single family dwelling that this change would turn it into what I can see as a, a multi rental, uh, a, a multi rental addition that is just not what this area is supposed to be about. Okay, and I see Mrs. Uh, Winfield, I see you're in number 25 Drury Line, so you're sort of like behind, like one sort of behind the street. Um, yeah, we're a block. Sort of so facing over. the house that's that this house is behind. Yeah. Way to say it, okay. Like all of the people here, we bought our houses, we live in them. And we invested in them. And this right. is changing the whole area to something else. Okay, how many years have you been there, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Winfield? Long time. 1962. Okay. Very nice. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that I've, I've said what I need to say, clearly or not. Okay, thank you. Let's see if any of the members have any questions for you. Does anyone have any comments or questions for Mrs. Winfield? Okay, and if not, we'll move on to hear from Peter McIlvena uh, at um, 9 Fabian Place. Peter Mickelvena. Bear with us, Mr. Chair. We're looking for the area resident now. Mr. Chair, um, Peter was previously on the call, but now um, it seems that he's dropped off. He's not on the list anymore. He's not. Okay. Okay, that's unfortunate. Okay. And if he's not on the line, he's not on the line. So uh, let's go back to uh, Mr. Perez for his rebuttal to uh, Mrs. Winfield. Yeah. Hi uh, again. Uh, Peter Jovovich is the gentleman that uh, is he's supporting us now. Oh, he is. That's the gentleman you were talking about? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, he sent but, a letter, then he sent a letter of support after. No, no, that's nine Fabian. That's across the street, not the guy beside you. Well, the name sounds the same. That's why I thought, yeah. okay. Okay. Okay, as per the, the, the lady that was on previous, uh, yeah. this house is for a single family only. It's for uh, a growing family. There's not going to be more than one family living in it. And also, if you can please put up the first floor plan, I can just demonstrate uh, the footprint. The footprint is remaining the same as what's there. The only 
changes the little breakfast area at the back. That breakfast area at the back is only increasing a, a, a meter back of what the existing is there. So if you can put the first floor plan, you can see what I'm talking about. So the footprint of the house is similar to what's there. We're not over massing what's there. We're just going in line with what's in the existing. So I feel that what we're proposing is not a, out of character in the area. And we try to permit a, a nice uh, front elevation that incorporates what's going on in the area. And we didn't try to make it too modern because that area doesn't have modern. So we feel what we're presenting is a meets all four tests and uh, hope that the committee of adjustment agrees with me. Thank you very much. Okay. So you're in your, you're, uh, you would dispute what community planning is saying and that it's, uh, it's not, um, in character and, uh, for a proposed, uh, scale of the development. Yeah, because he's saying that uh, we're uh, in going imposing on the neighbors, but we're not because we're side yards are greater than what you permitted there. So our massing is not over massing from what I see. If you can look at what like the, the first floor, you can see how what we're proposing at the back. It, it's very minimal and it's only on the first floor and we comply okay. with the length on the second floor. So I feel that's not an over massing at all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Perez. Uh, yeah. Committee members, any follow up questions or any, uh, or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? I'll uh, try and make a recommendation here. Um, having looked at the, uh, the plans and requests for variants, it looks like uh, they've, they've made some changes to try and accommodate uh, some of the concerns of the neighbors and, and some of these concerns will never be addressed. Um, so having reviewed them, um, I think they meet the four tests in the planning act. So they're minor and uh, appropriate. Uh, so I'll move for approval and, and uh, I'll tie them, I think to the, um, the plans received June 29th. Uh, as it relates to the building length, since the building length is different on the second floor and the first floor, and the FSI, since uh, there appears to be some openings in the second floor, which could be, I guess, filled in later to add some uh, some square footage. Um, and there's no uh, conditions from forestry, so I think uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Palmer. The second for Mr. Palmer's motion. I see Mr. Kumar's hand go up. I'd like to second that with a friendly am amendment. I'd like to add to um, the condition that Mr. Palmer said, and also to include the south side window treatment in that condition. I believe the neighbor wanted to ensure that there was a tinted window. So uh, that's a, a great amendment to make. So we'll add that to my recommendation. Okay, so as amended, all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Can I just clarify, so it's tied to the plans received by your office on June 29th, as it relates to the building lengths on the first and second floors, the floor space index and the south side windows. Thank you. South side window treatment. Or is it glazing? Window treatment makes it sound like a blind. Or is it opaque? They wanted opaque glazing. Is that whatever? We don't want vertical blinds. We want horizontal. Mr. Komorik, what was the intention of the? The intention was to um, ensure that the window treatments included the uh, the the opaque glazing, which I believe was referred to by the neighbor. Okay, so that all of the south side windows have to be opaque? I don't believe it's all of them. I believe it's, um, there were certain ones that were specified in the uh, deputy, in, in, in the letter, in our uh, deputation. I know, but in your motion, you have to tell us which ones then. Perhaps uh, are they not reflected on the drawings? Perhaps Mr. Perez can assist. Is it the second floor or the main floor? Well, hi, uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I can assist you with that. Uh, when we spoke to the neighbor, it's the breakfast area where all the glass area is. If you look at the floor plan, we wrote there frosted glass and also on the elevations, we wrote frosted glass. So in that back at breakfast area. It, it was noted on the drawing, so I just want to. Uh, yeah, it's on the drawing. So yeah, the drawing. so yeah, the south side window. As noted on the drawings of June 29th. Right. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we had a mover and a seconder, I think, right? It was Palmer, seconded by Stan with a friendly amendment. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Thank you. Thank you uh, Ms. Have a good evening. Well, Ms. Winfield, if you're still on the line, thank you for your participation. And um, since 1962, things are starting to change. So um, I guess going on talking about change, we'll go on to our next application. Item number 27, which is uh, 1824 Street, another application to construct a new detached dwelling with a detached garage in the rear yard. This matter was deferred also from the April 21st, 2022 hearing. Uh, there are three uh, variances. We have the materials from the previous hearing. We have the long branch character guideline checklist, and then a letter dealing with material materiality. Planning is looking for conditions of approval to construct as illustrated as it relates to the cladding material. Uh, four letters of support. Forestry is looking for a denial of variance one and the additional materials. Uh, otherwise, urban forestry conditions one, two, and five. And Andy Choles has advised that he wishes to address the committee on behalf of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. So we have two speakers, Murray Fern, the agent for the applicant, and then Andy Choles on behalf of Long Branch Neighborhood Association. Welcome, Mr. Fern. Good afternoon, committee members. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, just begin with my presentation. Um, as you uh, said, we were deferred at our hearing on April the 21st to address concerns of the planning department and the Long Branch Neighborhood Guidelines. A uh, proposed new dwelling has been redesigned in uh, conversation and consultation with the planning department. Um, uh, the length of the dwelling was reduced from 17.91 meters to 16.54 meters and now is no longer a variant. Uh, variance number two, floor space index, was reduced from 0.76 to 0.68. And uh, variance number two, the south flanking street setback has been increased from 0.3 meters to uh, 0.51 meters. We have also revised the exterior finishes to incorporate a vertical siding element and break up the massing of stucco. These changes have allowed the planning department to remove their objections and now support our application. We do agree to the condition of the planning department that our drawings will be submitted for permit and the house will be constructed as per the plan submitted on June 27, 2022. Um, variance number three. Uh, variance number three has remained as is. The proposed garage is located uh, on the existing driveway. This driveway uh, is really our only option because there is a curb cut at the end of it. And um, on a lot, our lot having only a, a width of 17.58 meters, uh, there is, uh, it was an impossibility, I guess, obviously, to, to have a 0.6 meter setback. Um, I guess at the, um, just to address the, the, the forestry uh, concern, um, we are a little uh, confused with that because the owner had spoken to uh, Savannah Verbitsky Atlanta Verbitsky initially um, and um, indicated to him that at the time there was no design and uh, the, um, uh, the, the walnut tree at that point, uh, it was impossible to issue a, re a removal permit. It was discussed uh, that if you proposed, had proposed construction permitted by the Toronto building and if it was in conflict with the proposal. Urban forestry would likely issue a tree removal permit. Um, 
and it went on just to say, let us know uh, in the future what your steps are, and we've obviously had our plans uh, submitted to the city now, so um, uh, Forestry has uh, made their comments. Um, We have submitted, uh, with regard to forestry, again, we have submitted an arborist report and a tree protection and planting plan. The tree in question is tree number two in the arborist report. The planting plan shows four new trees to be planted and fees to be paid in lieu for two trees as per the forestry requirements. The tree has put us, this tree has put us in an impossible situation. Um, any addition to the rear of the existing house would require its removal also. It is only about six feet behind the existing dwelling. As indicated previously, we reduced the length of the dwelling to less than 17 meters, which eliminated that variance. The owner is willing to do any planting required by the forestry department to uh, obtain their approval. Um, in closing, uh, the owner has spoken to all of his adjacent neighbors. Um, unfortunately, most of who uh, are, uh, have an issue with actually signing a, 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 a form, um, but none of the adjacent neighbors have, have any objections. Uh, and we do have four letters of support. Um, we've earned the approval of the planning department. We only have three variances, and in our opinion, we've met the four tests of the zoning bylaw to allow the committee of adjustment to approve our application. Um, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fern. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Fern at this point before we listen to uh, we hear from Andy Scholes on behalf of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association? No questions? Okay, let's hear from Mr. Scholes. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Andy Scholes. I live at 12 Jasmine Avenue in Long Branch. I'm a board member of the Long Branch Neighborhood I will be referring to a, a letter of objection submitted by Judy Gibson, the chair of our tree canopy enhancement of the LBNA. Uh, I'm not sure if that's in your file right now, but the pictures of these very large trees is perhaps the most important part of the letter. If that letter is not available to you today, pictures in the Arborist report also show these trees, however, they don't really show them in relation to the neighborhood. We support urban forestry uh, requests well, for refusal. Let's clarify, uh, I don't have, I. Yeah, yeah let's, it, it just came in today, so it may not be available to you. It, it is in the uh, the AIC file right now. If but, it just uh, came in today, it's not available. Well, so, sorry, it came in came in last night. Yeah, in the additional night. materials, we got your request to address the committee, but we didn't yep. get your materials. We did get the forestry uh, memo. Very well. I'll have to draw pictures with my words. We, we support the urban forestry uh, request for refusal. Urban forestry reports from July 19th, 2022 and April 14th, 2022, both ask this committee to deny the variances for the FSI being requested by this applicant. The application demonstrates why the tree canopy in Long Branch is being depleted at such an alarming rate and why this application in its current form should be refused by this committee. Of the three trees on this property, this application proposes to remove two large native mature trees, including the healthiest tree on the lot, and it injure the third. The arborist report submitted by the applicant confirmed sufficient space on the lot to replant the number of trees required. The tree canopy at 1824 Street is to be removed. All trees in the rear and proposed to be removed, including a 52 centimeter DBH healthy black walnut, the healthiest of the trees on the lot. We're especially concerned of this black walnut tree located close to the back corner of the present home. The forestry report includes a very good picture of this tree and forestry has requested refusal primarily because this tree will be destroyed. Uh, you don't have it, but there is an aerial shot uh, above the tree canopy of this block and the overhead view of the tree canopy being removed by this application shows how little tree there is on the block, especially along 4th Street north of this property. It is a significant loss of tree canopy on that block. In 2019, a Master of Forestry Comp Conservation student from the University of Toronto studied the impact of residential intensification on the urban forest in Long Branch. They looked at 40 recently developed properties in the neighborhood and they found that there was a 56% tree canopy loss in redeveloped lots and 24% loss on adjacent lots. Insufficient growing space is left for the tree canopy loss to ever recover. 
This dramatic loss in tree canopy is further confirmed by the city data released in January 2020. The Long Branch is the hardest hit neighborhood for tree canopy loss in all of Etobicoke, York. Long Branch has experienced the greatest tree canopy loss, negative 43.4%. That's a drop in 43.4% in all of Ward 3 and all of Etobicoke, according to the 2018 tree canopy study conducted by the City of Toronto. Study reveals that it is undeniable that our neighborhood is losing tree canopy, which is contrary to the objective that the city sets out to grow the tree canopy by 40%. Long Branch has lost more than 40% in that, can in that period of time. Applications such as this one that destroy mature trees and leave insufficient space for replacement trees are one of the primary reasons why our canopy is in decline. Planting young trees or cash payments in place of replanting is not sufficient to deal with the damage caused by removing established trees that are decades old. Uh, numerous uh, City of Toronto official plan policies include shaping of the city where they talk of protecting our neighborhood and green space from development pressures. OP policy 2.2.2i uh, talks about protecting neighborhood green spaces. Official policy 2.3.1, healthy neighborhoods considered to be physically stable development in neighborhoods to be consistent with the objective which will respect and reinforce existing physical character of the buildings, streetscapes, and open space patterns in these areas. Environmental sustainability will be promoted. Naturalization and landscaping improvements of tree planting and preservation need to be included. Official policy 3.1.2.1 build form talks of preserving existing mature trees wherever possible and incorporating them into the development site. Uh, also in the official plan, the natural environment says we must not only protect the existing urban forest, but enhance it. Protecting Toronto's natural environment and urban forest should not be compromised by the gross insensitivity to the needs of the environment or neglected. Official policy 3.4.1 refers to preserving and enhancing the urban forest by providing environments for trees, increasing tree canopy coverage and diversity, especially of long-lived net native uh, large shade trees and uh, just to finish off here on October 2nd 2019 the City Council adopted an item to declare a climate for the purpose of naming framing and deepening the Council's commitment to protecting Toronto's economy our ecosystem and our community from climate change Toronto has launched its first resilient strategy that will integrates Toronto's major climate and environmental plans to advance the vision of more resilient Toronto one of the goals of the new resilience strategy under infrastructure is for Toronto is more resilient to climate change, including hazards of flooding and heat. Yeah, the Long Branch neighborhood character guidelines. Wrap up your five minutes. Thank you. This application fails the four tests in our opinion. The variances being requested are not minor. We therefore request that this application please be refused by the members of this committee of adjustment. That the applicant re revise their plans to preserve at least a healthy black walnut tree at the back door. This is a very large house that should be redesigned so as not to end up in the destruction of the few trees that are on the property. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Charles? So, Mr. Charles, I'm just looking. This black wall, it's right at the, the back corner. I think Mr. Uh, Mr. I Fruit. believe he said it was six feet from the back door. That that could so be correct. It means any, you know, to make this house any bigger, unless you go up frontwards or, you know, you build around the tree. It is a big problem when you have, you know, existing large shade trees that are located so close to the foundations of uh, what are now considered. It is quite a large house, too. Yeah. So I, any house, I think what you do, it's going to impact that tree, unfortunately. How old do you say that tree is? I, I don't know, but it's it's quite large. It's probably the largest one on the block, I'd say. Right. Yeah, that's why your tree canopy has shrunk because that's... of where those trees were. You know, if they were closer to the rear lot lines, it would have been less problematic. Anyway, let's go back to Mr. Far Fern, if no one has any questions for you. Uh, to uh, respond to what you've had to say. Here, I'm... Oh, hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yep. Hello? Yeah, it's uh, it's um, Murray Fern uh, uh, to um, um, reply to the uh, objection here. Um, I just, uh, I, I wrote down some notes based on what um, the uh, Mr. Close had uh, Originally submitted to the to the to the committee, and just to uh, refer to that, um, we've eliminated uh, variances. We've eliminated some of our variances. We've reduced others, 
and we redesigned re the house elevations to be more in keeping with the neighborhood. The planning department now has no objections to this proposal. And I guess maybe a question would be, uh, I'm not sure where Mr. Globes was at our initial uh, application, um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe since the planning department has decided to approve us that uh, they still want to try to object to it. Um, I'm not, I don't know that for sure. But, um, and just uh, another uh, item here, as we speak, there's a home under construction at 3024th Street, five houses north of us. This house was approved by the uh, Committee of Adjustment on uh, July the 18th, 2019, after the introduction of the Long Branch Neighborhood Guidelines on January 21st, 2018. Um, variances approved, among others, were the gross floor area variance of 0.68, which is exactly what we are, and that's one reason the Planning Department um, had no other objections with our applications, the, the size of the house itself. Also, a length variant, variance was approved on that dwelling of 18.96 meters, which is greater than ours. And as I said, ours is less than 17 meters, which complies with the, the city requirements, and uh, there is no variance uh, with regards to that. Um, again, with regards to the tree removal, the existing house is within the protection zone of that tree. Any addition to the rear, as of right, would result in the removal of that tree. We are in a no-win situation at this start. My owner has spent months and bent over backwards to satisfy the planning department. And now we have their approval. Um, the, um, the gentleman referred to uh, green space requirements. Uh, we, we meet all the uh, allowable uh, required landscaping on our property. And um, again, just to go back to um, uh, a conversation that my owner had had with uh, Savannah uh, Svetlana Sverbinski initially before we had submitted the plans is that um, um, if the construction uh, was permitted by the City of Toronto, then uh, they would likely issue a tree removal permit. And along with that, we um, again have submitted our arborist report, which shows planting new trees and um, uh, being in um, uh, I guess with regards to what we need to do in order to, to have the forestry approval. Okay, Mr. Fern, thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Fern or Mr. Scholes? Uh, there's someone ready to weigh in with motion, members. Mr. Taylor. Yes, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, a lot said about uh, trees and the uh, extravagantly extraordinary large home on, the, on this proposal. Um, I, my preference is always to uh, uh, move on tree issues toward uh, uh, addre addressing our urban forestry department's conditions on that, and they've given us conditions of approval one and two. Uh, I don't, I don't find this to be an extraordinary large home in today's standards, about 2,200 square feet. Um, I'm satisfied that the variances are minor in nature meet the other tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval subject to the Community Planning Department condition and Urban Forestry Conditions 1 and 2. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconded for Mr. Taylor's motion. Mr. Kumarek, thank you. Any comments? Okay, uh, all in favor? So I would concur with um, Mr. Taylor's observation that I just did a quick calculation on square footage, I believe it's about 2,100 square feet, which is not excessively large. No, not today. Okay, all in favor? If I don't see Mr. Palmer, I assume it's unanimous. So we'll mark him as absent. He may have lost. Uh, okay, no. okay. Uh, next application, item number 28, 59 Lawnside 
Drive. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are only two variances. The big one is coverage and is a length of 0 0.04. Uh, so we basically have the one variance for coverage. Um, we have the zoning waiver, the material from the previous hearing. This was deferred from the June 9th hearing. Uh, we have correspondence from MTO. Uh, perhaps we can hear something on that about a permit for land use uh, before starting building. I don't, we don't know anything about that. So um, let's hear back materials from the previous hearing. So yeah, we'd only have basically the one variance. And Andrew Trotter is the, uh, sorry, that's the NAST application before. Trevor Gain is the agent and as well, the neighbor from uh, 54 Lawnside uh, is on the line as well. Good that's afternoon, Mr. Mr. Chair. This is Trevor Gain. Hello, Mr. Gain. Yeah, I, uh, I'm here to speak on the merits of this application on behalf of the owners. Uh, for the record, I reside at 10 Celebrity Place in Markham. Okay, so we only have really the one variance in coverage, so... And it's kind of large. Can you please explain? Uh, and, and doesn't we, we haven't heard from planning? So uh, uh, yeah, it? well, you sort of indirectly heard from planning back when this application was before you back in the June ninth hearing. We had four variances uh, in coverage, building length, uh, rear yard setback, and dwelling length. Um, at that time, planning recommended refusal of the application just due to the quantitative nature of those variances. Uh, we seek through deferral. So that we could rework this application and work with planning, which is what we have done. And now they have uh, basically gave us our blessing with the redesign. We brought it down to the two variances, as you mentioned, uh, thus deleting the rear yard setback and the building depth variance. So, um, yeah, building length, like you said, four centimeters is sort of a technical variance based on how the rooms got themselves lay laid out. And the coverage was reduced down from 44% down to 38. Uh, again, um, just as a result, the design of the house and the usability of the house for the owners. I will uh, submit that uh, we no longer have any other side yard variances. So like building length, uh, basically as of right, rear yard uh, is as of right. And we just kind of filled in our box a little bit for this new dwelling. So overall, uh, planning was satisfied with this change, gave us the thumbs up to go ahead and, and we seek the next available hearing. And this is the application in front of you today. Okay. Okay, uh, we have a letter of, uh, we do have in the previous materials, a letter of objection from a neighbor uh, who's registered to speak. So I don't know if he, prior to the last hearing, uh, to see what uh, he's still concerned based on the changes you made. Uh, and was there something from the MTO or I saw that from somewhere else? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a, con that's a condition of approval. That's a standard. Uh, we're within the screening zone of a highway. So any sort of, uh, oh, new okay. house build. Okay. It's a land use permit. It's just a standard uh, application. Okay. So. Okay. So I, yeah, I did see that. Okay. So let's hear from uh, Mr. Giacomelli on behalf of his mother. Uh, he did register. Let's see if he's still concerned. Okay. Have his previous letter. My Hello. Welcome, sir. Mr. Giacomelli? Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Mario Giacomelli. I reside at uh, 54 Alongside Drive. I still have a concern about the, uh, the variance for the, uh, the uh, overall coverage of the house. Uh, even though the variance has been changed to 38.1%, it, uh, it brings it down to like 41.7 square meters of the, per of the permitted coverage. If, like if you do the math, that, that based on the house being a, a square structure, it, it adds 3.59 meters in, to the length, or 2.45 meters on the overall uh, width. And I have an objection to, as far as that that variance there. The other thing that concerns me is the uh, the layout of. If you look at the drawing basement plan on this submission, uh, first of all, the basement plan. Is uh, is the wrong plan that was submitted? It's it's it doesn't uh, doesn't respect the upper levels. There is a cold storage area in the front of the house. If that cold storage is there, 
does it not impede on these minimum six meters at the front of the house for the setback? Um, but that's now these are the only two questions I have right now. Well, you'll you finish your he'll answer you. It's not a go back and forth, sir. So you make your submissions, and he'll get a, he'll he'll answer your questions in his rebuttal. Okay. Okay. The, you're, you're, uh, across, you're across the house. You're across the street, right? Yes, I am. Okay. One house over. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. So yeah, these are the only two questions I have right now. Is the the uh, does the uh, front cold storage impede on the six meter setback of the requirement of the house? Sorry. So is that your only question? Pardon me? I just told you, you have to finish saying what you have to say and he will answer. He's not going to answer you until you're finished. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. And uh, you appreciate he's building a new house with only one variance, which is kind of unusual today. Um, in any event, I'll turn it back over to um, Trevor Gain to respond to that, your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I'll open about the cold storage at the front. Uh, I'm not a zoning examiner, but uh, basically there's allowed projections in the zoning bylaw, and one of them is a front porch, covered porch, et cetera, and it does allow for a, a excavated area underneath that porch. So the main house lines up with the required front yard setback, and then we're allowed to project into the required front yard, the six meters. Uh, by a certain amount, uh, I think it's like two, 2.5 meters or something like that. So there's no variance associated with that, uh, never has been. Uh, so that's an as of right um, projection in the front yard. Uh, speaking about the coverage, uh, you're right, single variances. I will highlight again that um, we have no, uh, well, technically we have no building length variance and we have no side yard variance. Um, what's kind of driving the coverage up is the fact that we got a double car garage uh, as requested by the owners. So when you input the double car garage uh, behind that. I don't know if we can bring that ground floor plan back up, but we have a, an area for storage for bikes for recycling. Plus we have an internal stair. So uh, with any house design, a, a ground floor garage pretty much eats up 25% of the footprint. So the time you add a kitchen and family room and dining room and all the other elements that make up a single family dwellings these days, it just sort of drives the footprint up and and uh, in the initial original application maybe a little bit overzealous on the owners to get a kind of a space that they want to uh, achieve uh, however we pulled that all back in to kind of get the application that you have in front of you and and uh, running my own practice i kind of understand where these owners are coming from in, in sense of kind of over designing it at, at that time if you want to call it that um, because housing is expensive, land's expensive. So everybody that builds a house generally does it once and doesn't want to move. And then kind of long gone are the days where you move into a house for five years and you kind of upgrade and move down the street or to another area. So, um, you know, people invest time and money and energy. They get entrenched in neighborhoods. They're kids in school, dentists, doctors, and they're building a house that they can uh, satisfy their family needs for a long time to come. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gain. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Gain? Or... Uh... Or the neighbor uh, across the street. questions for him. I sort of have a question for staff, I guess. Uh, we have the planning refusal report from recommendation from June 9th. And usually when they are now um, changing their position on that, we get some kind of email or something saying that they no longer have any concerns. I, don't, I haven't seen that in our package. No, we don't have anything new from them. Okay, so are we to assume that silence means that they are now okay? I would say more that they're not taking a position. Okay. Rather than okay. Thank you. Is someone ready to uh, make a motion? And I don't have visuals on, only on Stan and Michi. That's all I can see right now as well. So um, do we still have quorum? 
I see Nishi, Stan, and Michael. So we've lost Neil and Donald. So we have quorum. And we have the room. Yes. Okay, so quick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are some issues with WebEx, so yes. Well, Brian, we should see if they, you know, we can get them. Oh, did I? I don't know. We seem to have lost oh, uh, Donald. Neil earlier. Oh, there's Donald. Donald back. Donald, you've heard the, you've been with us? I'm just awaiting a motion on this application. We just had the question of what we, we didn't hear back from planning who was opposed when it was a different application back in uh, in June 9th and uh, they're silent. So Stan just was wondering if we had heard anything from planning and we have not. So we're just awaiting a motion. Okay, I think uh, on, on balance, I believe the variances are minor and uh, therefore uh, do meet the fourth test and I would like to therefore propose approval um, with no conditions. Okay. Thank you. Seconder for that. Mr. McCleskey, thank you. All in favor? Okay. We so, have visual like Don. Is Don's hands up? No. I, he's I don't see Don. Don. He's, so I'll be, we'll be marking Don and Neil as absent for this. Oh, I don't think you have to necessarily get Don did, I believe, hear it or he can advise if he heard it, but whatever the case. I know, but he's not here for the motion, so we can. Correct. Okay. Hey, uh, next up. Don's is, back. Well, there he's back. <laughs> Hello, Don. Were you in favor of that motion? You're you're on mute. You're on mute. His hands up. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, second to last application, item twenty nine. 28 Elliott Avenue, it's an application construct a two-story addition and a detached garage in the rear yard. There are seven variances. Uh, we have material from the previous hearing, June 30th, 2022, this matter was referred. We have urban forestry looking for conditions two and five of denial. In the uh, additional material, we have the minutes from the previous hearing and urban forestry is looking for a denial of variance number seven. Speaker on this application is uh, William Hall and uh, the neighbor at 18 Bannon, Steve Crane, may or may not speak depending on the situation. He's not Three. here. Okay. So we just have uh, William Hall. Uh, yeah, William Hall back. Yes, this is Bill Hall, Marketry Design Architects again. Yep. Uh, would you like a small presentation? Uh, committee members, we have everyone here. Uh, basically, yeah, you have seven variances. We haven't heard from community planning. Um, just a, a quick uh, Coles Notes version. I will give you the quick version, yes. Um, yeah. Basically, as, as you can see, it's apparent as soon as you look at the survey or the site plan for this property that is a, certainly a, uh, a difficult property to, to develop in any way. It narrows to the back uh, dramatically, uh, small, tight, in all, all senses, and the existing home was built, you know, skewed to property lines. So adding in any sense of the word um, mm -hmm. is invariably going to trigger variances all over the place. Um, for example, uh, at the, on the, the west side, we have uh, moved a wall uh, two feet farther to the north and being skewed, not parallel to the property line. All of a sudden, we go from point zero uh, 0.82 down to 0.81, so a half an inch difference, but it is a variance for the list. Uh, right. Extra width um, on a flankage uh, when we're already on the property line, so we've asked for six inches on that. Um, but, you know, basically, it, we're squeezed. Yeah, I can see it's a very difficult lot. It's interesting, we don't have a location map included in our package, which is... Well, um, <laughs> I, which is funny, this, but... I, I had a guess knowing the neighborhood. I live in the neighborhood. Um, all of the properties along Bannon are primarily 40 foot, except for these last two, um, the Cranes mm -hmm. and, and my client's property. And obviously, they somebody in their wisdom just chopped it up and left it the way it is. With the new bylaw, I mean, we're hopelessly deficient, obviously. 
um, even in the Etobicoke, old Etobicoke bylaw, were probably deficient. Regardless, um, so we are asking for some variances uh, for the setbacks um, and for height. Uh, one thing I did want to uh, draw attention to in regards to the height, um, if um, even if the com if the committee chooses to grant that uh, variance for some additional height, we will still be lower, in fact, than both of our budding neighbors. So the height is in keeping, absolutely in keeping uh, with the neighborhood and our direct uh, our direct uh, property sh sharing a property line. Um, the, the garage we absolutely cannot uh, construct without a variance. Um, the the bylaw requires a six meter setback, and our property line is just slightly over eight meters. So the mass is fairly simple. You know. Okay, thank you. I, you know, I think I wish there was a, an ability where you have regular lots and you're granting variances that look strange, uh, putting an asterisk so that people don't come later and use it as a precedent. Understood. Understood. Can can I add one more point? I, I would like yeah. I would like to respond to urban forestry. Um, urban forestry has always been the major item on this property. Um, and uh, when my clients came to me and they said, we want access to our backyard, we want to utilize gar the garage space, I immediately realized that we were we would be dealing with uh, um, a city owned tree and urban forestry. And uh, so from the get go, before they even hired me, we had uh, an ar ar my arborist uh, ur urban forestry innovations come in and assess the situation and give us their blessing or not. And they said, no, they would. They felt they had a, a, a good proposal to make to keep the tree healthy. Um, and so we've always been aware that urban forestry is, is in the mix and, and has, a, has a big role to play in you know, this project's uh, feasibility. Um, so asking for a, a total denial, find it a little bit harsh, and it's certainly not in keeping with the conversation I had with Max Dita over the phone. Um, and deny construction to till we satisfy for another tree. I just feel that um, they are alternative. You know, if if in your wisdom you do decide to grant variances, the alternative is sub, uh, submission of a complete application. I think that would cover up both situations uh, adequately, and um, they still will then have a, a chance to uh, review our proposal on its merits. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Hall or is someone ready for a motion? And I don't see Mr. Taylor. <laughs> so if he has his hand up, I don't see it. Mr. Morick? Um, I think I'm ready for a motion. I totally understand where the applicant's coming from. Um, we're not trying to set precedents, but we're looking at it as, on a site by site basis. Um, it, it makes sense. It's desirable uh, and therefore meets the four tests for this particular site. I would like to therefore move approval subject to uh, the planning conditions set out, which I believe addresses most of those issues, and also subject to forestry conditions one and two. Okay, thank you. Second to for Mr. Kamorik's motion. Ms. McCloskey, thank you. All in favor? Uh, Mr. Palmer, you're opposed? We just doesn't hear. Or I don't see Mr. Taylor. I'm in favor anyway. Neil Palmer looks like he's doing something else, and I don't see Mr. Taylor. Barb, do you see anyone at your vantage point? I see Neil, but I don't think he's really participating, and I don't see Donald. Okay. Okay, so what do we do? It's three, two... Two well, I think, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, having said that, we're going to move on to our last application of the afternoon. Forty one Roth Day Avenue. It's an application to um, construct two story rear addition, a one story front addition, a second story addition above the existing dwelling, a new front canopy above the existing porch. A rear yard deck and a detached garage in the rear yard. There are seven variances. Planning is asking for a refusal on <laughs> variance two. Again, another assistant planner. It's 0.45. 
um, they suggest a refuse don't talk about what else to do. Um, but I will hear from Mr. Trotter, uh, ask him, Andy, if he can build with 0.45. So I assume we'll take that as a refusal uh, recommendation of the entire application if they're refusing the 0.6. So, Mr. Trotter? Uh, Andy Trotter, 81 St. Clarence Avenue. Uh, yeah, I worked with um, planning on this. Um, <clears throat> uh, we, we reduced the length of the building back two feet. Um, to the point six and um, uh, FSI, um, which is uh, in, in this neighborhood, I did a routine disclosure. There's 23, um, you know, properties with a 0.57 to 0.77 FSI in this area. Um, 12 of those are 0.6 to 0.77, more than 50% of the applications. And then on Rossi alone, there's 11 Ross say at 59.3% from 2012 and older one, 35 Ross say at 59% and 28 Ross say at 0.6. So the planner said, if I go after we did the deferral, we came back, we, you know, we had to defer because of a zoning mistake also, but we're, we're back and forth. He said, if I bring it down to 0.59 from 0 0.60, he'll, he'll accept it and he'll work with that. But it got to the point where, you know, we were, um, uh, you know, we, we were truncating this addition so much that it, it was becoming almost not even worth the point of building. Um, the, 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 the living room in the back has, has become, uh, you know, 10 feet from 12 feet. We would have had to bring it to nine feet. It just, it was just becoming, uh, you know, not really, really even worth going ahead with this and then we reduced the size of the deck we reduced the garage considerably and what i did to create less um of uh an, an imposing presence of the addition was i reduced the height of the garage which i didn't well my client and i the homeowner did um and we reduced it to 0.35 meters to create uh less of uh, an imposition um of, of mass and, um, you know, the, the clients are a young family uh, with two kids and they're trying to get a couple uh, bedrooms upstairs and trying to make it more of a family home. Uh, they're a wonderful couple. They get along well with the neighbors. There's no problem with the neighbors. I think this is a very reasonable application. I think it fits in the neighborhood and meets the four tests. And I think planning is mistaken on this. That's my point. That's my take. <laughs> Sorry, planning is doing what on this? I think planning is mistaken on this. On well, this. yeah, but they don't—they don't give. They just say refuse the uh, variance too, but the rest of the application can't can't exist at a point five, like nine or point five five or point five. They just said refuse it. That was and refuse. Okay, my my variance. verbal my verbal yeah. discussion with planning was if yep. I brought it to point five nine that they would accept it. That was that was the okay. discussion I had with them. So, All right. Just my comment, this is a ridiculous report. And uh, I don't believe this is signed off by two managers because it doesn't make any sense to put out a report like this. But we used to get a lot of them from in the past and uh, it, it kept coming in. So it's up to us, as Mr. Palmer pointed out the first time we got it, you don't give other variances in isolation that are not tied to a viable plan. So if you have to deny it, you have to deny all your variances. Anyway, that's just me uh, so on my soapbox. So uh, other mem members, are there any questions for Mr. Trotter? Is someone ready for a motion? I just want to point out that at point six FSI, we're still talking, we're talking about a 2000 square foot house. So we're not talking about an excessively large house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no there's no even discussion in the memo as to why they're turning that down. And there's no there's no complaints from any of the neighbors. Exactly. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, unless there's any other questions or comments, I'm prepared to make a motion. I find all the variances meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that. 
Mr. Kamarik, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Um, thank you, Mr. Trotter. You have your approval. And uh, most important motion of the day, motion to adjourn. So move. I see, Don, you've been banished to the basement to make the system work. <laughs> I've had trouble with internet. You've probably noticed for the last three. Okay, so glad everyone's here at the end to say uh, have a great uh, long weekend, everyone. Thank you for and I guess part of our next hearing. So just to state on the record, August 4th, we had a hearing. It's been canceled. Yes. So our next hearing is? August 18th. Okay, we'll see you then. Okay, have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.